Hi everybody, welcome to Storytime with Nona. I'm Nona and I've got another exciting story from this series that we're doing on Mary Inglebright's storybook favorites, nursery and fairy tales. I think it's been a really good book and I hope you've been enjoying it. So we've got another couple of stories we're gonna to read today. Let's get started. Today we're reading Jack and the Beanstalk. There once was a noble woman who had fallen on hard times. Her castle had been stolen away by a greedy giant, and now she lived in a cottage with her only son, Jack. He was a lazy boy, always dreaming and never working. Mother and son grew poorer and poorer until they had nothing but a cow. Jack's mother told him to sell the cow for a good price and he agreed. But do you know what? On the way to town, Jack met a strange little man who gave him three magic beans in exchange for the cow. Jack thought his mother would be happy to have the beans. After all, they were magic. Three beans, Jack's mother said. When he got home, you foolish boy, disgusted, she threw the beans out of the window. Now Jack felt sad and he went straight to bed. But in the morning, when he went out to the window, he saw that the magic beans had sprung up into a huge vine. There was nothing to do but climb it. Higher and higher he climbed. And at last he reached the top of the vine and found himself looking at a castle that was high among the clouds. Jack didn't know it, but this was the very castle that had been stolen from his mother when he was just a baby. When Jack got there, he knocked. A giant woman answered the door. After taking one look at him, she said, Please, please run away. My husband is a cruel giant. But Jack was exhausted and hungry, so he offered to work for food, and she let him in. As he was finishing his dinner, there came a deafening roar. Jack hid in a cupboard, just as the giant thundered in, bellowing, Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. But the giant's wife said, It's the stew you smell. Humph, the giant grunted, and he sat down on his, to his giant supper. At last he finished eating, and his wife brought out a golden goose. Lay! shouted the giant, and the goose laid an egg of solid gold. The giant amused himself for hours, commanding the goose to lay her golden eggs. And finally, the giant's wife brought out a harp. The giant said, play me a drink, and a drink appeared. Play me a pillow, and a pillow appeared in the giant's chair. Play music and the harp played lovely music until at last the giant fell asleep. When the giant was snoring loudly, Jack crept out of his hiding place, grabbed the golden goose and the harp and started to run, but the harp twisted in Jack's grasp and started chiming, Master, Master! Jack held tight to the goose and the harp, and ran to the beanstalk as fast as he could go. But the harp's cries woke the giant. His feet shook the ground as he chased them. The beanstalk trembled with the terrible weight of him. As soon as Jack was safely on the ground, he cut the beanstalk with one swing of his hatchet. The giant fell to the ground and died instantly. Jack gave the golden goose to his mother, who instantly recognized it as her own beloved pet. Then he said to the harp, play dinner, please. A grand meal appeared before them. The very next day, Jack asked the harp to play a gown for his mother, a castle to live in and happiness to last a lifetime.
That is awesome. That was a great story. That ended well. Jack made a good purchase. I hope you guys liked that story. So we're going to have a little bit of time. These are short stories, so we're going to read another one now. Hooray! And the name of it is The Gingerbread Boy. A little old woman and a little old man once lived together in a little old house. One day, the little old woman made a little gingerbread boy. When she went to take him from the oven, up he jumped and away he ran. The old woman and the old man ran after him calling, stop little gingerbread boy. But the gingerbread boy just laughed and sang, Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread boy ran on and on until he met a cow. Stop, said the cow. I want to eat you. But the little gingerbread boy hollered, Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread boy ran on until he met a horse. Stop said the horse, I want to eat you. But the little gingerbread boy called, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. The little gingerbread boy ran on until he met a pig. Stop, said the pig, I want to eat you. But the little gingerbread boy shouted, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. The little gingerbread boy ran out until he met a fox. Hello, said the fox politely. Well, the little gingerbread boy was feeling very bold by now, so he said to the fox, I've run away from the little old woman and a little old man and a cow and a horse and a pig and I can run away from you, I can. I can. And then he started to run singing his little song until suddenly he stopped, for he had come to a river. The fox caught up to the gingerbread boy. Jump on my tail and I will take you across the water, the fox said kindly, and the gingerbread boy did. After a minute, the fox said, the water's deep. Jump on my back, and the little gingerbread boy did. Then in the middle of the river, the fox said, it's getting deeper. Jump on my shoulder, and the gingerbread boy did. Now when they were near the other side, the fox cried, the water is even deeper. Jump on my nose. Now the gingerbread boy knew that the minute he jumped onto the clever fox's nose, the fox would gobble him up. So he waited until they were almost at the shore. Then he jumped onto the fox's nose but jumped onto a rock and then onto dry land and ran away singing, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. So he got away after all. I like that story, that was good. I hope you all enjoyed Mary Inglebright's storybook and her illustrations are just amazing, I think. So. Next time, we'll probably do some more from this book because I think it's been a great series and I hope you've enjoyed it. But it's time to end today, so you have a wonderful day and I hope you're enjoying your summer. I'll see you next time on Storytime with Nona. Bye!